that's my job. Got it. Okay, uh, welcome uh, to Beginners Academy. We have our group on Zoom. We meet uh, weekly and every other week we try to have a talk for uh, beginners. And um, Ham's coming back to amateur radio. Um, tonight, uh, we're going to have a beginner's battery guide for portable ops. Uh, I'll be giving it tonight. And let's see. We'll get started. We've got about a dozen folks in the meeting, and I'm sure they're going to uh, make some useful comments as we go along. Well, <clears throat> ham radio is fun outdoors, and all you have to do is listen to the bands, uh, uh, particularly on the weekends, and you're probably going to hear as many parks on the air stations as anything else on the band. And um, so POTA is uh, huge, <laughs> and there are activators at parks, uh, and there are chasers that could be anywhere. They could be in their home, and it's a great, it's a great program. Uh, some people use QRP or low power radios for going outdoors, uh, particularly if they're going to go hiking or climb a mountain. Um, <clears throat> there are also hams that are taking their 100 watt rigs outdoors. Uh, <clears throat> what I find, uh, most portable operators set up for four hours or less. That's not any kind of rule, but I'm just estimating. And uh, uh, even though we may be working a pileup, uh, the rig really is on receive most of the time. And uh, we all take breaks. So <clears throat> tonight we're going to talk about batteries. And uh, batteries have many chemistries, and the chemistries are changing over time. What most of us grew up with uh, <clears throat> is lead acid batteries. And uh, they're around today. Uh, they're relatively cheap. They're heavy. Uh, that's why lead is in the name. They're heavy. And, uh, but uh, they're, their performance, it used to be all we had, but uh, you're only recommended to use about 50% of the rating. So you have to be pretty careful to just use half of its capacity, stop, and then recharge it. Uh, also, lead acid batteries, they'll operate your rig, but as you go along, the voltage is going to drop, and uh, if you're running 100 watts, uh, it's going to get low enough that it will affect your rig. Um, I've used an ICOM 7100 rig, and it, if it ever goes down to 11.7 volts, uh, that rig's going to shut itself down. Uh, lead acid batteries uh, will self-discharge when they're in storage. Uh, it helps to put them on a uh, maintenance charger. But unfortunately, uh, they'll die fast if mistreated. So I was all, I also used uh, batteries for rocketry and I was always disappointed when, darn it, <laughs> I've killed another battery, so. Um, also, uh, people outdoors, like I mentioned, uh, a, a number of them are QRP advocates uh, using rigs that are 5 or 10 watts. And the real fact is almost any type of battery will work uh, for those power levels, and they won't be very big. Um, on the, in the picture there, I have a uh, little QRP transceiver. And I used uh, um, metal nickel hydride batteries. 
So the power pack is right on top of the rig and the uh, same form factors, double A's, but they're rechargeable batteries. And those are perfectly fine uh, for doing QRP. Well, when I got back into amateur radio about 10 years ago, it was just about the time that the the videos were showing up of lithium batteries bursting into flames. And uh, I think some of those videos were done on purpose. I'm sure a lot of them were. Um, uh, so lithium batteries can be dangerous if they're mistreated. Uh, they need to be properly charged and properly discharged. Um, and they're perfectly fine when used as designed. So our cell phones, laptops, just about anything these days have lithium batteries in it, but they're being used as they're designed and charged and, and everything's just fine. But there was a concern about safety. And at that point, I heard um, about I saw some ads for uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries and they were described as being uh, safe or safer than uh, most lithium batteries. So I said, well, why don't I try this? And um, um, my first one was actually from Tenergy. Um, it was about, uh, 10 amp hours, but anyway, um, there's a lot of good news about these batteries. Um, and one key thing is they're 50% uh, the weight of lead acid batteries. So that's very helpful for uh, portable ops. Another thing, uh, you can use essentially the full capacity of the battery without worrying. Um, and um, <clears throat> so you don't have to worry about that 50%. Uh, you're, you could use it up to 90, 95% and, and uh, it's gonna shut itself down uh, without, without any harm. Um, the number of discharge cycles are very high. I put 1K. Uh, it varies with the different batteries, but these batteries are probably going to outlast me. Uh, I'm not going to wear them out. Uh, and the hits just keep coming. Uh, the voltage um, uh, is like 13.2 volts, maybe a little less. Um, and uh, that's very compatible with our ham radios. So, so there's some margin with the voltage and uh, your radio is going to be pretty happy. Um, and more good news, the discharge curve is uh, essentially flat. Uh, so, um, so pretty much through the uh, capacity of the battery, it's going to keep the voltage up. Also, uh, low self-discharge. So I have just described the perfect battery. The only thing that's not perfect is the initial cost is high or has been high. Uh, they're, they're getting cheaper. But even though the initial cost is high, uh, the life cycle cost should be better. I don't think you're gonna to have to replace one of these batteries. So uh, <clears throat> uh, you're gonna end up saving money in the long run. So a little story about this. Um, I, when I discovered these, uh, I also discovered an outfit called BioNO and I became a good customer. And if you talk to Chris at BioNO and ask him, do you know Greg? He'll probably say, yeah, Greg Lane <laughs> in 4KGL. 
So I did a little bit to uh, kind of uh, uh, bring this into awareness. I certainly wasn't the only one. So they've become very popular for ham radio. And uh, BioNO uh, tailors their product to the ham. Uh, they're useful for a lot of different things, but uh, uh, they are hams now. They've got a lot of good information on their website. Uh, I found this on the internet. Um, this is a BioNO 30 amp being discharged at 7.5 amps. Uh, uh, that was what this person, WB4JON, he had a load that would get the 7.5 amps. But, but what you see, it's kind of a shelf going to the right un until it, it finally dies. So, uh, so that's a great pattern. Uh, the only thing to know about that, you might not know when the end is coming unless you're kind of monitoring how much you pulled out of the battery. So I'm sure I'll get some comments about this. Uh, I'm kind of a BioNO uh, fan. And BioNO, I would say, is the premier supplier for ham radio. But uh, they're pricey. It, it's about $10 per amp hour. So uh, if you get 100 amp, well, let's see. If you get a 100 watt uh, battery, it's probably going to be about $100. I hope I got that right. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> over time, uh, there are other brands, other sources that could be cheaper. And some of our members in Panama City have tried those and seem to be happy with them. Uh, you could build your own battery from cells. Uh, I don't plan on doing it, but uh, some people in the spirit of do-it-yourself uh, do it. And But... Uh, be very careful if you short a cell out. It, it could be uh, a problem. It could get very hot very fast. And um, the battery must have a battery management system uh, to uh, uh, protect from uh, short circuits, uh, protect from overcharging it and to keep the cells balanced uh, when you have a number of cells. So uh, BioNO and pretty much all the others will have a battery management system. But if you get a battery that doesn't have one, then uh, that could be a problem. Um, if you are ordering uh, a, a lithium iron battery, they have to come by ground in the United States. But it's pretty nice that uh, you can take advantage of uh, free shipping from Gigaparts or HRO if you purchase one through them. Now, actually, uh, the BioNO website has a lot of details about <clears throat> choosing a battery and I've kind of really simplified it here so I call it a ballpark battery estimator and um, uh, radios um, <clears throat> have different receive current and I'm pretty big on the receive current because even though we're we're on there on CW SSB or digital modes, um, uh, for most of the time, the rig is receiving. So you can get a handle on how long it's going to last uh, from the receive current. So I have a number of uh, radios here, uh, and I haven't listed their receive current, but I have put 
the equivalent wattage at 12 volts. So um, <clears throat> if it drew uh, two amps, then that would be 24 watt hours. Okay, so <clears throat> you see there's a spread of uh, received wattage and uh, the QRP radios have the best. Uh, uh, and it goes up from there. Um, uh, I included a VHF, UHF radio, the ICOM 5100. And um, so moving on, I also listed the transmit amps at max power. Um, <clears throat> uh, of course, that's going to be lower on a 5 or 10 watt radio. Uh, on 100 watt radios, it's around 22, 23, 21 amps. Well, <clears throat> it's important that your battery be able to take that kind of current draw or give out that kind of current. So uh, 100 watt radios are going to need larger batteries. Um, and uh, there's one rig that <clears throat> Chris has, the TS2000. It's a little high on receive, um, but still a great radio. Uh, okay, from there, uh, the fourth column essentially I have hours at 36 watt hours if you had a battery with a 36 watt hour capacity um, that would um, based on the receive uh, give you about seven hours uh, with a 817 now <clears throat> the you know the published receive current is a number uh, which you can really confirm by actually using the radio. Um, the KX2 uh, takes, is lower uh, in receive, at least the numbers I got, which that would give you 15 hours. So anyway, um, I mentioned that I'm kind of estimating that most people are do their activation within about four hours. So you can kind of see that your battery is going to outlast your activation. You could even go on, you know, eight hours. <laughs> so um, a uh, 100 watt hour battery will give you a whole lot of time at QRP. Uh, you probably don't have to recharge it each time you go out, but I do it anyway. All right, but um, those batteries uh, really aren't big enough to handle uh, the, the 20, 22 amps. So I have another example of a 240 watt hour battery. And... Uh, you can see that you can get uh, uh, 10 or more hours uh, out of those. So <clears throat> uh, you will uh, need to do a little research. I think I'm trying to make it simplified here. BioNO has a lot more specific data in their FAQs. It's very good and they identify which ones of their batteries would work with which radio. So I encourage you to look at that. Any questions about this at this point? It just turns out that the 240 watt hour battery is a <clears throat> 20 amp hour <laughs> and the 100 watt is about a 10. And the 36 is about a six amp hour, I believe. So, so anyway, uh, now these are uh, uh, lithium iron phosphate 
batteries. So the weight is good and the performance is good. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Um, I would probably recommend, I do recommend a 20 amp hour battery for a 100 watt radio. It's not your only choice and it doesn't have to be a bio -inno battery, but <clears throat> you want a battery that uh, will handle uh, uh, when you're tuning up or using digital modes or whatever. Um, you could get by with a smaller battery, but the fact is this battery weighs five pounds. So, um, if you, if a five pound battery fits into your uh, scenario for doing parts on the air. Uh, now, the only downside of this is the cost, okay? And uh, I'm sure uh, when we get a little further along, our members will share some of the less expensive batteries they found. Over on the right, is a charger. You do want to use a charger that's designed for your battery and you can buy one of those with your battery if you're buying it from BioNO. Uh, <clears throat> optional accessories uh, include a battery box, uh, I do have one of those. It's not mandatory, but it's been pretty convenient. And um, um, it's nice to have because, you know, it, if you lose power, everybody, they still want to charge their cell phones <laughs> and do all that. So their USB outputs on the battery box and everything. Uh, to really get an idea of uh, how much power you've pulled out of your battery, you can use one of these uh, meters. I show an example from PowerWorks. And <clears throat> the display rotates and gives you various information, including how many amp hours you've pulled out of the battery. Uh, since the voltage is so constant, that will give you an idea of how much you have left in the battery. Uh, solar, you know, it's very cool, but frankly, uh, it's not required for most POTA outings of four hours. Uh, uh, the batteries will cover the four hours and more but when it comes down to field day, uh, it's very helpful. Uh, and a panel similar to one shown, I, I have one and I get four to five amps when the sun is directly on it. And uh, so that's given me five amp hours, essentially uh, over an hour. And uh, uh, that actually covers what I'm pulling out of the battery. So the battery pretty much stays at full charge during the daytime if the sun is out. Now, where this can really come in handy is when you have a multi-day power outage. And we've had those in Northwest Florida. So uh, if you want to keep your uh, batteries up during that kind of situation, well, it's just gonna be very handy to have the solar um, panels. Uh, there's different sizes, so you can decide how those fit in to your scenarios. Uh, uh, also, uh, you don't hook up a solar panel directly to your radio. Uh, it's really hooked up to the battery through a charge controller. And um, that's to uh, properly charge the battery. So you, if, 
for whatever chemistry you're using, you want to get a battery charger that's made for that chemistry. A lot of them have a setting that they'll work with multiple chemistries. But if you have a solar panel and you have lithium iron phosphate batteries, you want to have the proper charge controller. So, um, I guess I've got some recommendations uh, for beginners. And the first is to gather up any rig you have and whatever power source you have and take it outdoors and uh, operate. And uh, certainly Parks on the Air is a great opportunity to operate and make some contacts. So you don't have to have the optimum rig, the optimum battery to have fun. Um, but if you really get hooked on it, portable operator, you may want to optimize um, and invest more in it. It's up to you. And uh, there's, and I'll mention for the Canadians that there's always a way to be frugal. So just ask Chris. <laughs> So uh, the bottom line is to have fun, be safe, and uh, 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 like I said, uh, the lithium iron phosphate seem to be the popular battery for the long run. Uh, 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 but it, it's it's really up to you. So. With that, I'll uh, stand by for uh, comments or questions from our, our Zoom group here. Hi, I'd, I'd like to point out one thing, Greg, and uh, probably not an issue for you guys, but the lithium ferrous phosphate battery, if that's the, what you call it, LIFEPO4, -E you can't charge it when it's below freezing. So you have to get it at least up above uh, 32 Fahrenheit before you start to charge it. Whereas the lead acid doesn't charge well when it's cold, it's not efficient, but it, at least it won't damage the battery. But uh, a lithium ferrous phosphate should be brought up above freezing before you charge it. So not that that's going to be an issue in Florida, but up here that is, because uh, now, now discharge, it is awesome below freezing. In fact, it's got much better cold weather, you know, like zero Fahrenheit uh, characteristics then does the lead acid battery. But when you, when you're done and you go to charge it, you got to get it back in the house, warm it up before you put on the charger. So that's, that's about the only thing I'd like to bring up. Uh, back to you, Greg. Okay. Well, Chris, I, that I, go ahead, George. I'll say one thing that I researched uh, before I did it is you can put lithium iron phosphate in, in, Parallel, if you, if you want to double your capacity, I have two 16 amp hour batteries. I have connected in parallel for 32 amp hours. I know there are some cautions with that. You want them both to be fully charged. Uh, you basically want them to be at the same charge level when you connect them, things like that, uh, but you can do it. Identical batteries is a, is a plus too, yeah. Yeah, you, you're, you're better off having two new batteries, you know, basically same age, um, Definitely need to be the same voltage because you can get lithium ion phosphate and different um, battery levels. Well, you know, I think there's a 72 volt and other things, but so you basically want two identical batteries, have them both fully charged, then make the parallel connections. And I did it and, and nothing heated up, fortunately, and it worked just fine for me. And I've done the same thing with NIMS and uh, the uh, gel packs for around the house. It wouldn't be much help on the uh, on a radar challenge, unless you want to haul an extra pack behind you. But uh, most of my battery work is for around the house for when we lose power and I've, I've paralleled them, but I highly recommend using two identical batteries. Yeah. Well, uh, Bob, KK4DIV, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Let's see. Could yeah. you uh, share some batteries that you have at your station there? How did you know I have batteries? No. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll start with this little one. Uh, that's the uh, three, three and a half 
three and a half, four and a half, four and a half amp hour bio NO battery. Uh, that's what I use for the IC705, what I used for the uh, last radar challenge with the uh, that recent RS918 Chinese radio. I've used it with my 817. It's a fantastic QRP radio. Um, I can pretty much keep this charged with a small solar panel, a small folding solar panel that I can throw in the backpack. So this is this one is great for QRP, does everything I need. Um, I did the whole radar challenge with one charge. I didn't even bother with solar. So uh, I think this is a nice, you know, battery, gives you a good battery uh, life out of for uh, QRP. Uh, then we've got Greg's recommendation for the 100 watt rig. I've actually got one. Uh, it's a 20, uh, 20 amp hour uh, bio -ino battery. And uh, I agree with Greg 100%. If you got a 100 watt rig, uh, that's what you want to go with. That was actually in my go box uh, with my 891, my Yezu rig, uh, until I put the Yezu rig in the truck. So now I need another uh, rig for my go box. But that's my uh, that's my full power uh, go box battery, and then I've got this other thing Greg showed the uh, the the uh, battery box that has all the outlets and everything on there, and inside this is a forty amp hour bio NO battery. So I've got I feel like I've got a pretty good spread of bio NO batteries. Uh, Greg did a good job of spending my money there. Uh, under his recommendation, but, uh, that that is awesome. That that battery box is what I take camping. Uh, I have a 120 uh, watt bio NO solar panel that I'll use in conjunction with that battery box. That will keep me camping all weekend long, and keep my you know GoPro charged. Uh, I'll um, I'll even run the radio off of this if I'm camping. Um, Keep the laptop charged, the cell phones charged, all that stuff charged over the weekend. Um, and if I've got good sun, good solar coming in, uh, I I'm, I'm certainly don't have to worry about it. And to be honest, I've never had to worry about it over one weekend. This has been plenty to keep me going when I'm at a place where I don't have power. And uh, so that's the bio -NO lineup. I think um, Greg is uh, right with the bio -NO stuff. It's a great, uh, great option. And if you want something cheap, um, you know, I have this little cheap uh, Chinese QRP radio that I got. It's something fun to just play around with. And then I have this, uh, another cheap uh, power bank. This is a 12 volt uh, power bank. This thing is called, oh uh, gosh, it's just called a power bank. But it's 12 volts. It's lithium. It's not a lithium iron phosphate. It's just lithium. And this will run a QRP rig for, you know, a couple hours as well. Uh, I've used it with this little thing, used it with the uh, 817. And uh, yeah, for just a short stint, an hour, maybe two, uh, this one will, will work fine. But um, since I've got this, I really don't use that other one much. So that's what I got. <laughs> Those are my batteries. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, Bob. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> uh, do we have some more comments about uh, batteries? Uh, uh, whatever you might use for portable dare I, operating. Dare I show the cheapy battery? Oh, please do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, there we go. I even... Moved it over to U.S. dollars for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so $58, but be careful when you're dealing with any Chinese, Chinese stuff. Always look at the shipping there. Yep. And don't forget to add that. So, so that adds up to 90 bucks or whatever. Just shy of 100 So about half price of the bio -ano. <laughs> And is the quality the same? I don't know. Ask me and Frank in a couple of years. We'll be able to tell you. But uh, <laughs> but there you have it. Now this comes with a connector that's very common in the uh, remote control right. RC world, an XT60 or something I think it's called. 
Uh, so you can get converters to go to your Anderson power pole, or if you're feeling brave, you could chop the wires and solder on your Anderson power mm. pole very, very carefully. Yeah, you have feeling, to be this is very, not, very careful. <laughs> yeah, it's not fused and it's not turned off. There's the charging point port there, the uh, higher power output port there. On this particular battery, they are actually in parallel. The, uh, the battery management system, you can't see it from that angle. Uh, so that shows you what's inside there, but in reality, there's also a little circuit board and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop my share here and go to the actual battery. So it, it's right, you can see that little bulge there. That's the yep. bat battery management circuit board right there, which they'll all have. Well, I shouldn't say they'll all have, but if they're 12 volts or and above, they're gonna have a, a management system. As Greg says, it does a couple of functions. It, it watches that you don't overcharge the battery, that you don't undercharge the battery. And if the temperature gets too high, it'll cut out. And it also, while you're charging, if one of the cells gets ahead of the other one, it'll knock it down so that they all finish the race at the same time on a charge. So that's uh, the BMS battery management system is a must have with these batteries. Oh, this price, by the way, includes the charger. Oh, that's good. Yeah, there it is there. Now you can get it without the charger for uh, for $6 less, but, uh, you know, whatever. If you've got a charger, you don't need it. Is the charger any good? I don't know. I've got the charger here, too. Uh, hmm. And it's got a little light. It goes from red to green when it's charged. Is it as good as a bioano? I doubt it. I don't know. <laughs> but it looks just like the bio by yeah the way. <laughs> but i, I read some stuff on the bio like and i don't think it's as good i i, well, I don't know it does a job but now uh there's another accessory that i've found useful um uh it's a uh a charger that will work off 12 volts so you can use your car to charge your lithium battery. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Because that charger there puts out 14.6 volts. Yeah. And your car, when it's running, it usually climbs up to about 14.4, depending on what kind of regulator you got in your car. Right. But, well, this little box. Oh, it's probably got uh, a booster. Eh? It. Yeah. Ah, so it and, probably uh, boosts it up and then cuts it back. Yeah, so it it actually doesn't get to 14.6, it's 14.3, but that's really enough. So I took that with me to California, and I, I it turns out there's a little uh, puck made for the KX Alicraft right. and the ICOM 705. Uh, it's very compact. It puts out uh, 12 volts at 4 amps. So I I hooked that to the uh, this other charger and I charged my batteries that way. Now, it, it sounds kind of uh, convoluted and expensive, but it actually was a very compact solution. Yeah, I've, I've heard yeah. of these boosters where they'll take you know, anywhere from 11, 12, 12 and a half volts and bring it up to 14, four or what have you. And then, then you can charge properly. Yeah. Or 14, two or yeah. whatever. Unfortunately, I don't have the pictures at hand, but. Does it have indicator light too, to tell you when it's charged? Oh, it right? has volts and amps. It is, oh. it is, it's nice. Slick. Very have slick. any of you guys, any of you guys use the, uh, I guess it's West Mountain Radio the power gates, um, like I'm using one of those on my truck with a lithium iron phosphate battery so I can just turn the truck off and it will actually charge it when I crank the truck back up and it's for lithium iron phosphate. You can oh. switch the jumpers in there. Um, it's called an Epic power gate. Uh, but that's one, one little 
thing that will charge the lithium iron phosphate yeah. batteries from your vehicle. Can I can I share again? Sure. Is this what you're that's what it. You're talking yes. about? That's it. I have one of those. Yes. Hey, that you, looks can slick. Hook, you can hook the solar panel to it. Um, I took a Mighty Max uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. It's about 200 bucks. It's 35 amp hours. And it comes in that U1 size that's for lawnmowers. And I, put, I upgraded my uh, Goal Zero Yeti 400 that the battery was bad in it. I just put the lithium battery to replace it. You know, the screen doesn't work well with the lithium battery, but the rest of it, the inverter, the USB, the 12 volt, all of that works fine. But I use the Anderson power pole ports on the side for the radio and for charging it because they, they can handle up to 60 amps. Uh, when you get inside, there's two 60 amp uh, fuses in there. Uh, so Holy I hell. use that as like a battery carrier, but I use this to charge it, hook it to my truck, and then it's mainly running battery power, or running power off the battery, the lithium ba uh, battery, unless you unplug that battery, and then the charging system on the vehicle will charge it. Oh, yeah, that's cool. cool. Yeah. For 189 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I did that so I could turn my truck off, you know, roll the windows down, sit there, communicate then you know if you get hot or you know hour of two's gone by you can just um turn the truck back on start charging that battery so it's made for for uh ham radio yes and it's really made for a shack uh but they talk about vehicle use in the in the little pamphlet but they barely mention it i mean this is not something i leave hooked up because it's got a little light on it yeah, it'll kill you. Want to let my truck sit there weeks, for yeah, yeah right a couple of weeks, and then the you know the battery's not working right. So, mm -hmm. but I use it when I know I'm going to use my radio. I, I plug that in, like I Jeez. did a little bit of that for field day. Cool, got, Greg. Greg, got you gotta a, you gotta get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Greg. Hey. Yeah. Um. That that. 12 volt, 20 amp hour bioano battery. I've got one also that I took out of my original big battery box that I used to have a 35 amp hour, you know, lead acid in. And it was always noisy, big, too much shaking around. I bought the little Harbor Freight, the little small ammo box, and it fits right. that 20 amp hour perfect inside. And there's room on the end to do all my meter, my jacks, my Anderson power poles, my cigarette lighter adapter. I did it all on the side, not on top, because the top is it's harder when you open the lid and stuff sometimes. But you can still do it different ways. And there's plenty of YouTube that show all the examples. But I converted mine over to that little bitty box. So I made it all nice and compact. And that's a, it's perfect for portable work. So I need to get more into it. I just hadn't used it as much. But I've got it all converted down. But people that buy that 20 amp hour, you can get that little ammo box. It's plastic and it's perfect. Yeah, yeah I was gonna. Yeah, go ahead. I was, I was gonna show an ammo box one that I made. This is a Harbor Freight ammo box. Uh, I'm gonna have to turn my background off or it's gonna lose everything. <laughs> Hold on just a second. <laughs> it's not the crickets. I hear frogs. <laughs> All right, now you see my real background. Anyway, so this is a Harbor Freight ammo box that I put together. Um, yep. One of the nice things about this is that it has a kind of a top lid that flips up. And that's where I mounted all those connectors. So it's yep. got Anderson power poles under there. It's got uh, yeah, switch. Yeah, it's, it's switch the power of the stuff on and off. You got the voltage meter and everything right there. And then this is the box that I have. Um, I have a box just like Bob has. I think that's the PowerWorks box. I've got a bio NO 20 amp hour in that. Uh, in this box, this is a cheaper, something I found on Amazon is 216 amp hour. I think it, it was Mandy brand or some strange brand, uh, but they're about 50 bucks a piece. Uh, so it's 32 amp hours for hundred bucks. Um, it's not too bad to put them in parallel. You say I wired everything to the top. And 
tray. So if you want to put anything else in the tray, then it. Just about to be everything over. So I've got uh, the two batteries in parallel to each other, connected right there. And in addition, because the box is a little bit big, I've got a power inverter that I keep in there as well that I put Anderson power poles on that I can plug up real quick. I use that for my laptop. Now, anything you add, like an inverter, you're going to lose some power. You're going to lose some battery life because of any extra gadgets you attach. Uh, but I couldn't really find an easier way to get my laptop plugged up outside of that inverter. So I made this, and it was a little bit cheaper than, you know, the, the one that, that, that comes with PowerWorks is great. It's perfect. You throw your battery in there, connect it up, but it's a little more expensive. So it's a little cheaper to build for myself. And I uh, had the, the tray and things like it. Like that in it that, that I think are a little useful. Hey George, you said you were using an inverter to uh, charge your laptop. Yeah. Uh, this is something I just started trying out. Uh, this is a uh, a buck boost converter. Uh, this will take uh, twelve volts. And I have on an Anderson power claw. Plug that into my box, and then it, this is adjustable. It's got a little adjustment pot. Or, whatever adjustment that is right there. And you can adjust it up to whatever voltage you want. Most laptops look for 19, 19 and a half volts. So I have that adjusted to 19 volts, 19 and a half, I think. And then that goes into the laptop. And that has been uh, charging, uh, charging the laptop just fine. And you don't lose as much power uh, going through an inverter uh, going this way. So that's a, a buck boost converter. Yeah, I was looking for different options. I, I think with the power connector that I need for my laptop, because I because they have a the power adapter to go straight to your laptop from that buck converter. Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, my, my laptop, I couldn't find one that would seem to fit. But so I, I've been trying it out. I moved to a Raspberry Pi that has a little buck converter on it um, yeah. to get a USB. And that, that's how it was going there. Yeah, or, just was, had, I've got USB on my box. Yeah, this just had some. Uh, I don't know what you call those little terminals. And I found a, uh, a, an adapter, you know, a barrel connector that fit my laptop. And I just put it into the terminals there on that converter. So that's how I got yeah. it into my laptop. Yeah, I'll have to look into that again. It's, it'll definitely be more efficient than that, that inverter that I've got. Um, you, you fact that, the fact that it has a, a fan on the inverter, you, you know, you're losing yeah. some power somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me if I yell? We got you yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. We got you. 100% now. <laughs> okay, yeah, well. It was like you are in a rocking chair before. <laughs> I am. We thought you were in the old folks' home or something. <laughs> okay, well. It's me. Uh, <laughs> th th this is my go box that you guys have seen. Uh, it's, uh, I made it so it's sealed in the back, and it's sealed all over. And then on the front, it's got a gasket here. And then when you snap it on, it's pretty much watertight. We hope. And, uh, the, uh, the radio that I got in there, an ICOM 7100. And uh, I got to pull it out of here. The face you can pick out. You can put an extended cord. And if you pull the guts out, you'll see there. I put the radio in there backwards, so I have yeah. uh, access to all the connections, and then the face sits up here like this. Uh, and then I have that battery, and this is that uh, 20 amp battery. 20 nice, amp. Job, nice job, Nice job. Nice job. Now. Uh, the, uh, what I did is I I, I, I connected uh, a, a power pole here, so I have access to my battery. Uh, I can use it to charge, and I can use it to feed another radio from it. And that's available up front. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> that's nice. Nice. So, uh, I did, I did have to make this to bolt it to the radio. I got a platform here, and then I have uh, the batteries bolted down. And it won't move. And just, 
I can leave it in the box. Or I can slide it off. Okay. Well, at this point, um, uh, last call for uh, comments or questions. Uh, I got one more question to, to Bob. Where do you get the Buck Booster? What what brand is it that you got there? I got a buddy with a M, uh, rain scatter system that he needs to get the voltage up higher. Um, I can't remember where I got it. I don't think there's a brand on it. Uh, well, Look. there is something written on the back. It says OSKJ or... Okay. USKJ, and did the pot I say I got oh. it off of eBay or something like that? Oh, hold it, Amazon. Jim's got it here. An XW twelve five four nine ninety five W. Cool. Pretty simple. Where do you buy them, uh, Jim? I got it on eBay. I think it was about twelve or thirteen dollars. Yeah, they're pretty cheap. I, mine was pretty cheap. So that'll be I, like a hundred. Yeah, I, I got then. I got this for running the uh, computer because it's got 19 volts output. This is a fixed one; it's fixed, but you can get the same thing in a variable. But they're not expensive. Uh, eBay is full of them. Just look up uh, power booster, I think, or battery booster, or something like that. Excellent. Awesome. And different currents depending on what you need, eh? Uh, this one is uh, five amps. Yeah, that'd be great. Ninety-five watts. So it won't run a, a big computer, but a little laptop or something like it will. Yeah, it's uh, it's for this uh, rain scatter ten gigahertz system. The the radio is fine. The transverter is fine. It's his oven controlled crystal oscillator wants to have thirteen point eight, and. Uh, where I'm running, I got power. So I got a power supply, no sweat. But when he goes portable with this thing for the 10 gig contest in August, I think it is, he's gonna be up on Lake Superior and he'll have be off battery. So if he had one of those guys, then uh, just for the oven controlled oscillator, he'd be laughing. In fact, I'm working him right now on Q65. I'll mention that to him. Thanks, Jim, and thanks, uh, Bob. Just remember, Chris, AC does not mean also Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure you get an inverter or a power supply that speaks French energy. Oh, yeah. Well, otherwise it's illegal up here. All right. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, it's uh, been interesting tonight and a lot of contributions from our uh, Zoom group here for uh, Beginner Academy. We got a lot of good mentors on here. And um, uh, we put these on YouTube, so you'll find a lot of, uh, of our videos uh, <clears throat> on the, our club's YouTube channel. So we'll say 73 and look forward to future meetings and talks.